Hello there. Today is the 11th of February 2024 and I'm going to tell you a story. Once upon a time, a long long time ago, there was a Pope and as a student in his young days, while he was still busy studying, he was visited by the devil. So, you won't sell me your soul, said the devil. Thank you, replied the student, but I'd rather keep it to myself. If it's all the same to you, said the student. It's not all the same to me. I want it. I'm very, very particularly so. Come, come, I'll be liberal about it. Just give it to me for 50 years. No. Nope. All right. Uh, 40, 30, no, 20, no, oh come on now, look, I'll tell you what, I know I'm going to do a foolish thing, but I cannot bear to see such a good student as yourself not prosper in the world and go to waste. It'll be so easy for you to prosper if you just um, let me help you along. I'll make you another offer. We won't have any bargain at present, but even so, I will nonetheless help you succeed for the next 40 years. But on this exact same day, in 40 years time, I will come back and ask you for a thank you in return, a bonus, so to speak. Not of your soul, mind, or anything not perfectly in your power to grant. I will ask you instead for something in return. Now, if you give it to me, we are quits. I'll help you along in the world, okay? But if you give it to me, then we are quits. If not, you'll, fi you'll fly with me straight to hell. What say you? The student reflected for some minutes. Agreed, he said at last. And just as the devil disappeared, which he did instantaneously, an envoy came to tell him that Emperor Otho of Germany had promoted him to be an abbot. And these promotions came frequently to him throughout his life first an abbot, then a bishop, and then an archbishop, a cardinal, and finally he was named Pope. Even though he wasn't particularly renowned for his erudition in theology, uh, orthodox theology that is, or for anything else, in truth, but it would seem by his works, his virtuous behavior, which, truth to tell, he did rather ostentatiously sometimes, washing the feet of uh, prisoners, and not on Good Friday only, but besides this, also by his knowledge of magic, alchemy, the Kabbalah, and other esoteric knowledge he had gained by being a distinguished and active member in many a discreet society. So one day, as he was in his study, now as Pope, okay, surrounded by books by Hegel, Kant, and the Illuminati, Alchema, and other academic disciplines, suddenly a sound of wings was heard, and Lucifer stood by his side. It is a long time, said the devil, since I've had the pleasure of seeing you. I have now called to remind you of our little contract forty years ago. You remember, said Francesco the Third, which was his appellation now, you remember that you are not to ask for anything exceeding my power to grant. I have no such intention, said Lucifer. On the contrary, 
I am about to solicit from you a favor that it is only in your power to bestow. You a pope. Well, I desire you to make me a cardinal. Why? said Francesco the third. In the expectation, I presume, that uh, of you becoming pope yourself one day when the vacancy occurs? An expectation which I may most reasonably entertain, said Lucifer, giving my global influence, my proficiency in intrigue, my familiarity and knowledge of the geography and paleontology of desert islands, uh, the abandoned wealth of its visitors, not to mention the state of the sacred college right now. You mean you would subvert the foundations of the faith and by profligacy and licentiousness render the Holy See odious and contemptible? On the contrary, said the devil. I would extirpate heresy and tradition and learning and devotion, demote priests and bishops who follow in the teachings of old as heretics as well as other matters inevitably tending thereunto. No, no. Well, if this be so, let's be off then. What? exclaimed Lucifer. You are willing to accompany me to the infernal regions? Francesco the Third said the devil with tears in his eyes. Pray, I put it to you. This is not fair. I don't quite want you to fly with me. Not yet. Look, I undertook to promote your esoteric philosophy in the world. I made you Pope. I fulfilled my promise abundantly. Indeed, you obtained, through my instrumentality, a position to which you could have never otherwise aspired. I have sometimes had a hand in the election of few popes, of course, but never before had I contributed to confer the tiara so openly as I have done with you. You have and are still profiting by my assistance to the fool, and now you're going back on your word? Lucifer, said Francesco the Third. I'm not going back on my word. I have always sought to treat you as a gentleman, and I shall continue to do so. So let us agree to the following. I will grant you more, much more, than making you a cardinal. I'll make you a pope right now, but for 12 hours only. At the expiration of such time, we will discuss the matter further. And if I, if, as I anticipate, at the end of these 12 hours, you are more eager to divest yourself of the papal dignity than you are to assume it now, I promise I will grant you any benefits within my power to grant. Done, cried the demon. And Francesco the Third uttered some learned words from the Kabbalah, addressed himself to the architect of the universe, and then instantly, at that precise moment, there were not one, but two Francescos, entirely indistinguishable one, one from the other, save by their attire, and the fact actually that one had a cloven foot while the other wore sneakers. You will find the pontifical apparel uh, in that cupboard over there, said the real Francesco, and taking his book of magic with him, retreated to a secret chamber. Lucifer looked at himself in the mirror and contemplated his physical appearance with some dissatisfaction. I certainly don't look too well without my horns and tail, he soliloquized. 
I'm sure I shall miss them most grievously, but an appropriate tiara and train were found which made fair amends for the deficient uh, appendages. And now Lucifer looked every inch a pope. And then, <clears throat> suddenly, the door was burst open and seven cardinals brandishing daggers dashed into the room. They were dissatisfied with Francesco III for not going fast enough in his endeavours to make the church from the people, by the people, to and for the people. Down with the traditionalist, one cried. He might be reading Anson in private, for all we know. Burn him, no, no, poison him, smother him with cushions, said a third. And one rather inexperienced young cardinal managed to say, let him be deposed by a general council. Heaven forbid, said another one, sotto voce. As they were getting hold of him, Lucifer struggled. But the feeble physical frame he was now inhabiting, and for the following twelve hours he would inhabit, was becoming inanimate with exhaustion. So another said, I propose <clears throat> that we forthwith start a search for some stigmata, the discovery of which will contribute to justify our proceedings in the eyes of the world. So they searched him and had not proceeded far when they noticed that instead of sneakers, he had a cloven foot. They were stunned. For the next five minutes, the cardinals remained silent, stupefied with amazement. And as they were gradually recovering their faculties, it would have become obvious to any observer that this pope suddenly had risen very considerably in their opinion. I say, brethren, say, brethren said one, this affair of disposing of our steam pope, well, perhaps, perhaps uh, requires more careful deliberations. Yes, said another, it is my belief that somehow we are proceeding here in too precipitous a manner. I was never fully convinced he was a heretic, really, said a third. I therefore proposed, propose, said the leader, that instead of smothering his holiness with cushions uh, or what we had originally contemplated, I propose that we spend the night in fasting, prayer and meditation and come back to it for further deliberation tomorrow. So they took the Pope, I mean the, the devil, to a dark room and left him there. Each of them wanted to save him really, but were conscious of the eyes of the other five looking and were not sure how to proceed, so they dared not. Each, however, took a key to the room where the devil pope was. The chamber was not only dark but horribly cold, and the devil in his present form had no enough fire in him to draw upon. His teeth chattered, he shivered in every limb, he was hungry and thirsty. Oh, if he could only get his hands on a glass of brandy or something. So the long January night wore wearily on, and Lucifer seemed likely to expire out of sheer exhaustion. When suddenly a key turned in the lock and one cardinal from Patagonia, Cardinal Anno, cautiously glided in, bearing a lamp, a loaf, half a cold roast kid and a 
bottle of good wine. I trust, he said, bowing courteously, that I may be excused any slight breach of etiquette of which I may render myself culpable, your holiness, or, excuse me, your infernal majesty. Bop, 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 went Lucifer, who still had the gag in his mouth. Heavens, explained the cardinal, I crave your infernal holiness forgiveness. What a lamentable oversight. Why? Why the devil, if, if I may so express myself, said Anno, did not your infernal majesty inform us you were the devil himself? Not a hand would have been raised against you. I have myself been seeking all my life for this audience with you. Why, for so did you, why did you distrust your faithful Anno? That's me who has served you so loyally, so faithfully, and so zealously all these many years. I shall never forgive myself, he continued, for my part in this transaction. Next to ministering to your majesty's bodily necessities, be they what they may be, there is nothing I have so much at heart as to express my remorse. But pray, trust me when I tell you that I believed myself to be acting in your infernal majesty's interests by trying to dispose of someone who is but too slow in keeping doctrine with the times. But let me get to the point, if I may, if I may be so bold, and, and that is <clears throat> the <clears throat> important and delicate matter of your holiness successor. I am ignorant of how long your majesty proposed to occupy the apostolic chair, surely not longer than Peter, but a vacancy must one day occur. And I do humbly propose that the office could not be filled by one more congenial than myself, or who could more fully carry out in every respect your views and intentions. And the cardinal proceeded to detail various circumstances of his past life, which certainly seemed to corroborate his assertions. But then another key turned in the keyhole, and he said, Beware of Vino, he whispered, and dived under the table. And Cardinal Vino appeared, also carrying a lamp, wine and cold viands. And seeing the other lamp and the remains of Lucifer's meal, he understood that someone had been there before him, and not knowing how many would still come after him, he went straight to the point and put his claim in much the more the same manner as, as Anno. And then another key turn, Cardinal number three, a German, and number four, an American, number five, another German. Number six was an Englishman who expressed the need to reverse the standing of Canterbury and York, and he continuously made use of a phrase, um, non obstantibus, in spite of, or despite, or notwithstanding, whatever it was. Now, what the seventh would have asked for is not known. For at that moment, upon his entrance, and before he opened his mouth, the twelfth hour expired, and Lucifer, regaining his vigor and his shape, sent this prince of the church spinning to the other end of the room, and split the table with a single stroke of his tail. And with the six cardinals crouching under the table, after the first shock of dismay, they all rushed to the door but found it bolted on the outside. There was no other exit, 
and no means of giving an alarm. In this emergency, the demeanor of the Germans set a bright example. Gedud, gedud. Patience, shrugging his shoulders as an Italian. Lucifer, in the meantime, had gone to fight Francesco, whom he found arrayed in all the insignia of his dignity, sneakers and all. Have you had enough? he asked Lucifer. Oh, I should think so indeed, replied Lucifer. But you know, at the same time, I find myself, don't worry, I find myself fully repaid for all I have undergone by all, repaid by all the assurances and loyalty of all my friends and admirers, and the absolute conviction that it would be a waste of time for me to stick around and devote any personal attention to ecclesiastical affairs. They are greatly taken care of, so my petition for my due reward due to me is that the cardinals be released and that their conspiracy against thee, which in any case I myself was the one to suffer, be buried in oblivion, and let things proceed and take the course they now, in which they now are. So, you don't want to take them with you to the infernal regions? No. It is more to my interest to leave them here. And so the door was unbolted, nay, open wide, and the cardinals came forth happy and confident into the fresh air. Out into the, <laughs> into the fresh air. However, after this experience, they plague him continually with allusions to certain matters mentioned in their initial interaction with the devil and worry him with continual nods and titterings as they point to his feet because they are never quite sure if they are speaking to the Pope or to the devil himself. And that is the end of the story. Uh, <laughs> many, many years ago, in the 70s, I think, I read a story in which this one that I have just read to you, I sort of applied it, uh, wrote it myself, but it, it's based on... on on a story that I read in the 70s. I don't remember the author. And it was a story like this, but uh, in, in a way different. I don't remember the author. But the story was written in 18, in the, in, the, in the 1870s, I believe. And it was something like that. I don't remember exactly, but I remember the, the sort of the story, the plot, and so on. So I uh, I thought, let me just um, adapt it uh, <laughs> uh, a little bit. So that is what I did. Okay. Well, thank you for listening, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.